A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments. We have sinned, been wicked, and done evil. We have rebelled and departed from your commandments and your laws. We have not obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Justice, O Lord, is on your side. We are shamefaced even to this day. We, the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel near and far, and all the countries to which you have scattered them because of their treachery toward you. O Lord, we are shamefaced like our kings, our princes, and our fathers for having sinned against you. But yours, O Lord, our God, are compassion and forgiveness. Yet we rebelled against you and paid no heed to your command, O Lord, our God, to live by the law you gave us through your servants, the prophets. The word of the Lord. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Lord, Lord, do not heal death as our sins. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, the sh- and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Lord, Dominus Fobiscum, Lexio Sant Evangelii Secundum Lucam, Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you, a good measure packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. Verbum Domini
A few days after our late Father Eugene died in September 2004 at the age of 90, this container he had kept in his top dresser drawer at the Abbey was brought to me. Father Eugene had told me the story of the box's contents many times. However, I had never actually seen this prized possession from his childhood that he kept inside. In the box was this well-worn baseball. In 1927, when Father Eugene was 13 years old, he was with his Boy Scout troop, Troop 13, from Burlington, Iowa, as they came on a field trip to visit the monks of St. Benedict's Abbey in Atchison, Kansas, my community. As they traveled to Atchison, they camped out along the way, making one of their stops in St. Louis to take in a baseball game at Old Sportsman's Park between the New York Yankees and the St. Louis Browns. Father Eugene was a monk for nearly 70 years, a priest for nearly 65 years, and taught biology in our college for 40 years. Being a thorough scientist, he had the tendency to put notes with everything so that the next person to use it could not question the object's origins. True to that trait, there was a note that was and still is today with this baseball. Father Eugene related the story of the scout troop's trip in this note. Before leaving on the trip, the troop scoutmaster had written the general manager of the New York Yankees to say that we would be in St. Louis for a couple of days during which the Yankees would be playing the St. Louis Browns. He asked if arrangements could be made for us to see one of the games and to meet Babe Ruth. In his reply, the manager said that arrangements would be happily made for us to get into the game free and to sit in the right field bleachers where we could watch Babe Ruth in action as a fielder. Father Eugene continued. When Babe was not scheduled to come up to bat during an inning, he would not go to the dugout, but would stand or sit in the front row of bleachers in front of us. The first couple of times he stayed out, he spent most of the time talking to us, shaking hands and autographing baseballs. When the game was over, some of us scouts went down by the Yankees locker room and I caught Lou Gehrig going in and got his autograph. So on this baseball are the signatures of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. That day back in September 2004, I removed the baseball carefully and examined to find the evidence in support of Father Eugene's story. And indeed, with close inspection, I could make out the signatures of baseball legends Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig on this ball. Unfortunately, over the many years of being handled by family and friends, the 87-year-old signatures have faded. It strikes me that the baseball and these much sought after signatures could be compared to the image of who we are as persons, as creatures created in the image and likeness of God, yet who have lived our lives well and not so well, who, were, who we were created to be and who we became at the time of our baptism have become well-worn and faded. The attachments our attachments to physical objects, our attachment to sin, have rubbed at us. And when, we, and when we remain in our sin, that mark of Christ on our soul 
becomes less recognizable. We celebrate today the commemoration of St. Patrick, the great missionary to Ireland. We celebrate in him the act of bringing Christ to a pagan people. But by this path, we also celebrate St. Patrick's own conversion. Raised in the faith, St. Patrick was captured as a young man and sold into slavery, where he learned the language and practices of his pagan captors. The faith of his childhood faded. Yet one day he began to recall the teachings on Christ his mother had instilled in him, and he experienced a conversion toward God. St. Patrick said of his conversion, the love of God and his fear grew in me more and more, as did the faith, and my soul had arisen, so that in a single day I have said as many as a hundred prayers, and in the night nearly the same. Conversion is a grace that, no matter where we are in our faith journey, restores that image of Christ in our heart and soul. Conversion is about discovering and growing in our relationship with God. It is about maturing in our relationship with the source of life. And this conversion is not a one-time event but an ever-deepening movement of our heart in our relationship with the Father. Our first reading from the prophet Daniel tells the story of man's constant need for this mercy of God, of the broken relationship we have with our Creator. The prophet writes, We are shamefaced even to this day, we the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel, near and far, because of the treachery toward you. But yours, O Lord, our God, are compassion and forgiveness. This Lenten season, and indeed each and every day of our lives, we are being called to conversion, a conversion that summons us to a radical rethinking and reconsideration of our lives. As monks of St. Benedict, we take a vow of conversion to the monastic way of life, which means each day we are called to rethink and reconsider how we are living our lives as monks. Each and every one of us gathered here today in the name of Christ, created in the image and likeness of God, must evaluate our lives each day. And after praying and meditating, we should, prompted by God, have an understanding of practical ways we can affect that conversion. I will strive not to murmur today. I will work at increasing my charitable acts today. I will try to avoid unforgiving emotions and see things from the other person's point of view. I will strive to use the gifts I have been given for the benefit of others. I will trust in God's mercy. All of these reflect on our attachments, things that need to be stripped away to reveal that image of Christ in us that may be somewhat worn and ultimately help us to answer the question of who we live for. It helps us recognize that our lives are not about us. As Jesus tells us in the Gospel of St. Luke today, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. This journey of ours is about how we grow in our relationship with the Father, receiving and sharing his mercy, allowing our lives and the lives of others to be restored through his Son, Jesus Christ. 
as we celebrate this Eucharist. Let us look to our hearts and ask the tough question. What have I placed ahead of Christ that has rubbed away at who God created me to be? Let us look closely that we might embrace the value of who we were fashioned to be. That person created in the image and likeness of God, like the signatures on this baseball, may be well-worn and faded, but let us trust in the grace of God's mercy to restore us to that image and likeness of Christ.